podcast is brought to you by NRL Group Incorporated. I'd like to welcome Janet stewart Lucier. Janet is a professional speaker and trainer who helps organizations develop high-performance work teams and is the author of Let's Talk Team Building, 10 Strategies for Becoming a High-Performance Team Member. Welcome, Janet. Thanks, Pirette. So what's our topic today? Well, today we're going to be focusing on respect in the workplace. But more specifically, we're going to take a look at the changing demographics of the Canadian workplace as well as the global workplace. We're in interesting and challenging times. Canada, like many countries in the world, is facing a large-scale retirement of baby boomers. This change in the Canadian workplace is opening doors for a new and emerging workforce, such as women, Aboriginals, underemployed immigrants, and the newer generational groups, such as Generation Y. We know that in the next 10 to 15 years, there's going to be a real time of change and transition for organizations and companies. And by 2011, the group of people in the 18 to 24-year-old age category will reach a peak in our Canadian society, and then will start to decline by over 300,000 people in the 10 years that follow. So we know that the face of our workplace is going to change significantly because this is the group that has traditionally fed the workplace, the new workers coming into the workplace. There are many factors that are going to influence the labor market over the next decade. One that really stands out, of course, is the aging baby boomers and how their departure from the labor market is going to present some challenges for Canadian workplaces across our country, particularly in the skilled labor sectors where there's likely to be a gap between the number of people who are retiring from the workforce and the number of people who are coming into it at the same time. Another really important issue to consider is that of the knowledge and skills that older workers take with them when they retire from the workplace. And it's particularly important in industries that rely less on technology and more on workers' skills and knowledge, and particularly if traditionally there's a high level of transfer of skills and knowledge from worker, one worker to another. Apprenticeships, of course, are an excellent example of that. There's two important issues that we need to consider. One, how do we fill the gap? Where is this new labor source going to come from? Where are we going to find people who have the necessary skills and knowledge to fill the gap? The other piece of it, of course, is how can we help workers who are already in the workplace, but potentially newer workers, get the new skills and knowledge in order to fill that gap? The pending labor shortage, particularly in the skilled worker sector, is actually a global issue, and it's creating a need to look at alternative labor sources that have traditionally been underrepresented in the workforce. These are groups like women and Aboriginal people or underemployed immigrants. Many countries, not just Canada, will also look to immigration to meet those labor demands. So we're in a bit of a competition for our labor at this point. A shift to a younger workforce in addition to reaching out to some of the underrepresented groups will significantly change the face of the workplace as we know it, and it will continue to transform itself over the next two decades. The reality is that the Canadian workforce is changing. We can see this in the retirement of the current aging workforce and in the efforts being made to recruit and appeal to underrepresented groups to meet the labor shortages. So diversity becomes an essential aspect of the new Canadian workplace. The Canadian workplace today is going to look fundamentally different in 10 to 20 years from now, so there's really an urgent need for organizations to help prepare for these changes to make themselves an organization that is a very inclusive one and that truly values diversity. Another important thing to consider is creating mentoring opportunities within your workplace. It's a critical piece of the transfer of knowledge. As baby boomers leave the workplace and are replaced by new workers, It will give both groups an opportunity to learn from each other and share the riches that they bring to the table. And the changes that Canada's workplace is facing right now are not unique to our country. This is part of a revolution that's going on around the world, so our challenges are actually both national and global in nature. It's important to consider also the leadership vacuum that's left by retirement, particularly as it relates to cultivating new and emerging leaders in the workplace. And I'm speaking here, of course, of the younger generational cohorts who are just starting out in their careers. There's a lot of research being undertaken these days with respect to the leadership differences across the various generations that are in our workplace currently and will be over the next 10 years, uh, both from the perspective of what constitutes excellent leadership or effective leadership and which leadership style is most preferred by the various generations. We also know that there are real differences in how people work across the generations. 
For example, we know that people who are in the Generation Y category really appreciate being mentored, and at the same time, we know that baby boomers really enjoy mentoring. So that's a great match. It's important, however, for Canadian workplaces to understand this so that they can create new leaders within the organization. Studies tell us that Generation X and Generation Y strive for workplace balance or work-life balance. So their relationship to work is quite different than that of the baby boomers who tended to be more focused on work. And none of these things are good or bad. They're just different. Thank you for bringing to our attention and to that of our listeners how the changing demographics really will cause some hurdles for us in terms of building respect in the workplace. So thank you, Janet. I wanted to invite, I'd like to invite our listeners to find out more about diversity in the workplace as well as other tips on building a high-performance workplace by visiting Janet's website at letstalkteambuilding.com. There you can download audio files of her entire book or just the chapters that are of interest to you. Again, her website is letstalkteambuilding.com. And if you'd like to contact Janet and her team directly, you can do so by email at janet at letstalkteambuilding.com. Thanks for being with us today, Janet, and I look forward to your next podcast.